All right, next let's learn about the feature hashing module or pill here in Azure ML Studio. So here's our documentation. They give us a little example here of some text and the sentiment score. So you can see sentiment higher on the nice things, lower on the on the negative sentiment. But here's how feature hashing works. The idea is to break up the text into a set of words and phrases and then simply count how many times those appear in each of the different uh, in each of your different uh, records. The idea is to see which one of these phrases really matter in whatever it is you're trying to predict later on. So we're not using this to predict quite, quite yet. We're just using this to, to understand the text and see what all the key phrases are. So here's how it works. Notice these phrases. Here is what they call a bigram term, meaning there's two words in each of these terms or phrases, and then uh, the number of times they occur. So this book appears the most. Uh, now here's the unigram, or the time, the number of times a single word appears. All right, so far so good. Then the idea is when we're done with that, we're going to then uh, use this to determine each of the hashing features. So hashing feature one here, let's say this is the word book, um, two is the word I or whatever, but it'll also include hashing features, uh, all the bigram and unigram, and you can do trigram, you can do as many as you want. So if you do, for example, a, a bigram analysis, it'll include a hashing feature for each of the bigrams as well as each of the unigrams all together. So uh, what else can I tell you here that'll be useful? Um, let's just go ahead and configure it. I'm going to start this one over again. I'm going to use stick with our uh, Twitter data here that we've been using. Next, let's go ahead and grab our pre-processed text again. So I, before we had some trouble with this, but it seems to be working out well again now. Uh, Pre-process text, let's say, let's launch the column selector. We want to process the text of the actual tweet right here. All right, let's run that, make sure that it works. Um, next, we're going to grab a clean missing data because again, this is gonna remove email addresses and URLs. Uh, and some tweets are entirely URLs or email addresses, and that'll leave us, leave us with empty data, which then becomes a problem later on. So wait for this to finish. All right, maybe I need to pause it here. Okay, now it's finished. Let's grab a uh, clean missing data. So I had to run that first because it creates a new column called pre-processed and then the name of the column that you processed, that one right there. So I want to get rid of everything but that and only remove records if they're blank in this column right there. And we'll use a uh, minimum missing value ratio. Let's see, let's change this to remove entire row. Okay. Um, Let's go ahead and calculate that. But then next we're going to need a select columns. The purpose of this is going to be to tell it exactly which, excuse me, which of the columns we're going to uh, perform this um, analysis on. So uh, pre-processed text. Uh, the reason why I have to use a select columns this time is because when I use this uh, feature hashing tool, which we're going to teach now, it automatically does it for every column that comes through. So, come on. There we go. What's your problem there? Collapse, collapse, yes. Here we go. Here we go. Feature hashing tool, this one. I uh, let's see. Oh no, I had. Oh, I know why. Um, no, yeah. Launch column selector. Uh, I guess I thought this one wouldn't give me this option. I guess it does. That's fine. Anyway, so feature hashing uh, n grams. It says how many? How long do you want the phrases to be? So, uh, well. Two says give us all bigrams. I think for a tweet, that's plenty. 
Um, if this was longer text, if this was a news article or something like that, you might want to include something a bit longer. But we'll leave that at two. Hashing bit size. Let me see if I can explain that back here from the documentation. Let's see the first time as they bring it up. Okay. Come and find the bit size. There we go. Use hashing bit size to specify the number of bits to use when creating the hash table. So default is 10. Uh, the idea is that we're going to create this table here that has either a zero or a one of whether or not it appears in the text. So two possible values, which means it'll let us create up to 10 bits, meaning uh, 10 to the, uh, or two to the 10th, two values raised to the 10th. So two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 5, 12, 10th is 1,024 possible columns. So, uh, and if we do that for, we only did it for one text column. The idea is if you do it for two text columns, you've got a possible of 248 uh, hashing features that will be created of possible values based on, uh, based on that text. So, um, with a larger, this is basically where, it, now it won't create all 1,024 if it doesn't find 1,024 unique uh, um, phrases or uh, features, but it'll allow for up to that. So with a tweet, we probably don't even need, uh, I don't know, maybe we will. We'll, we'll just leave it at 10 because there's not going to be a pretty large vocabulary with tweets simply because they're limited in number of words. Anyway, let's go ahead and run this. Unselected. Um, oh, I forgot. I got to change this to Oh no, if I leave it this way, basically it'll say include all string columns. I'm only allowing through one string column right here anyway. So that's why I use that so I didn't have to go and run everything before I got there. So, whoops, I meant to click this one and hit run selected. All right, I'll give that a second to run. So by the way, I went back and I ran that feature hashing too. So let's show you what we get here. Transform data set, visualize. It's going to take a while because it just created 1,024 new columns. And there we go. All right. So here's the original uh, column, the pre-processed text. And then it says pre-processed text hashing feature one through. And notice there's 1,025 columns because it also includes, where is it here? There we go, the pre-processed text. Um, as you scroll down, what you'll find, although it looks like there's a bunch of zeros, you'll see some ones here and there for tweets that include those features that are listed up at the top, but it doesn't tell you which phrase it's referring to up here, which is one of well, kind of a minor annoyance. It'd be useful in some cases to see what those are. However, we'll learn some tools later that'll show it to us. So this prepares and creates, generates new columns for you to test in a predictive model. But I'm gonna save that part uh, for a later video in just a minute. This is just a great way to break out an existing text in in a way that accounts for the text that's in all of the other rows. So again, this is simply the pre-processed text hashing feature one is simply the feature that occurred the most times across all the text, but it returned the data here in the order that it was originally in the data set. So uh, again, this may not have text in it that appears in these first few here, but that's okay. If you're able to see all, there we go, there's one. 1,024 columns generated, you'll see every word that does appear in this tweet at some point here in one of these columns that was created. So we'll use these columns a little bit later on for some prediction. For now, that's good enough. That's the feature hashing tool.